Good evening, everybody. I am um, I really consider myself privileged to be with you. Um, I'm going to take you back to where I was in 2013, uh, because that's just before my journey started with unwellness. And I think what I'd appreciate that you can see is that I was strong, fit, about to run my first 5K uh, race, five kilometer race. I was running a very busy optometry practice. Um, I worked in the rural areas. I was in, out, about, doing things all the time, social, organizing events, and living, um, well, what I thought was a great life. I'd started my international speaking journey, and I'd done a whirlwind tour in the UK, and it was phenomenal, and everything was just on point. I thought, you know, this is it. This is fantastic. And then um, within um, a very short time, that was all taken away. This is an outreach project that I am a director of in the rural areas in Southern Africa to help underprivileged learners to see. So very taxing physically. We drive out very far. We work with tons of kids in funny little cramped areas you can see with funny body postures. And you have to be quite healthy to be able to manage that. In the beginning of January 2014, I made the mistake of touching a patient um, without a glove on. And after COVID, no one would even think of that. But at the time, that wasn't quite the case. So I touched him and I contracted a adenoviral follicular conjunctivitis. And it's at the first level, it attacks the eye. It's quite a rare condition. I don't know if you've all heard of Ebola. I think we all have at some level, but it's just as contractual as Ebola. So you can get... Ebola just as quickly, it's that dangerous. And unfortunately, I touched him for less than a second. And I contracted this virus and I sent a picture to an ophthalmologist that I work closely with, an eye specialist doctor. And I said to him, what do you make of this lesion? And he said to me, don't go near that patient, Bev. Just send them straight to me. And I said to him, that is me. And he said, don't come to my practice, I'll come to your practice. I don't want you to bring that to my practice. So I started off being booked off for a week and it deteriorated very quickly because at the stage one level, it affects the eye. At stage two level, it causes scarring in the eye. And at stage three level, it starts to attack everything in the body that can become inflamed. So anything that ends in English in an itis, so it would be encephalitis is an inflammation of the brain. I had that. Spinal neuritis, an inflammation of all the spinal nerves. I had that. Global fasciitis is an inflammation of all the fascia, which um, the muscles in the actual body are contained in underneath our skin. I had that too. It attacked my thyroid and near destroyed it. Um, it attacked my endocrine system. And so my hormones weren't working properly afterwards at all and the muscles in between my rib cage, it's called costochondritis, very painful to breathe, very painful to try to turn over in bed. It's, if any of you have ever broken a rib or, or cracked a rib, it's, it's that kind of feeling, but over the whole lungs. And very quickly, because the whole body was so inflamed, I developed a huge amount of terrible pain and a weakness and fatigue. And so I went from being that person to being in a wheelchair in less than 10 days and desperate to find a way to get better, but you have to quarantine fully for six weeks. So that meant that no one touched my plates without them being sprayed with chlorhexidine and very strong alcohol-based um, disinfectants. No one touched anything I touched. And I was in a relationship at the time and gratefully, with someone medical, so I was able to manage, but very, very badly. And so my journey started then, going from one doctor to another to try and find a way to get better. And every one of them over that first year, I saw 13 medical specialists, neurologists, um, specialist physicians, anesthetists, uh, but they actually just deal with pain management, but I didn't want to go on pain medicines. I wanted to get better. And after six weeks of having the virus, it's a little bit like a hurricane. 
a hurricane blows through a city and it does a huge amount of damage in the area. And then the hurricane's gone, but you have to pick up the pieces from the hurricane damage and start to rebuild. And that's exactly what happened with me. But there was so much damage that two different physicians said to me, Shame, wouldn't it have been easier if you died? Because you have so much to deal with and you're so young. I was 41 at the time. And I don't think it would have been easy if I died. I, I love my life. I love my son. I took care of my parents. I had uh, four salaries to pay and a practice to run. And, and I wanted to live. I wanted to get better. But no one had a solution. So I started to talk to everyone because a physician said to me, Beverly, medicine can't help you. We don't know how to treat this or heal this. No one's ever got better from having neurological damage like you have. So we recommend, I recommend that you try everything. I know you're medical. I know you're science-based. I know you're academic. So your mind is narrow, but open your mind and try everything because I'm telling you medicine can't help you. And gratefully, he did do that because I started looking for help everywhere I could. So I tried so many treatments and I couldn't even put them into a talk that would take hours and hours to go through all the different kinds of treatments. But some of the more radical ones were, were done to try and lift the pain, raise my energy and restore my leg functioning because I couldn't walk. On the left here, you can see that um, I was in a steam bath there that was raised to 53 degrees. And then they would pump in six grams of ozone. And that actually helped me to at least be able to take steps, but in critical agony. And then it never did anything after that. And I would do this um, twice a day for two weeks. My partner would take me there and I would sit in this chair and it would be boiling hot. And then when we realized after about six weeks that nothing further was coming from it, I, I just left it. And so that wasn't a solution. On the right, you can see me lying with cords and everything and uh, electronics attached. There was a pain specialist, a physiotherapist uh, near my area where I had my practice who was renowned for being the pain specialist in the country. So I went to her and I went to her for eight weeks of treatment and it all cost a fortune and it didn't help my pain one bit, but she treated me like a pin cushion. I had a probe into my mouth at every session. There's a needle in the center of my forehead, uh, acupuncture needle. I was covered in acupuncture needles every time I was there. And then she used light radiation therapy. So I think she was onto something, but not quite. And uh, running interferential current across my legs and um, it made it vibrate. I'm not going to play the video on this, but it would make it vibrate. And the, the hope was that my legs would start working properly. But after eight weeks of treatment and an absolute fortune, thousands of dollars invested to try and this treatment, my pain did not change even measurably by 1%, which was very disappointing. Then I started with the pain medicines after one full year because I couldn't bear the pain anymore. But the pain medicines are very aggressive. And this was morphine based um, plasters. So patches that you would put on you, um, they look like a normal plaster you put over a, a cut wound and you wear it for a week. But it turned out I was allergic to them. So no matter where we would put them, I had the most terrible welts afterwards, which would take a few weeks to heal. And didn't it helped with the pain, but it was addictive. And so now I was a, um, an addict, which is something I really wanted to avoid. To come off this, they wanted to put me into a home, um, a rehabilitation center. And I said, I can't do that. I have a practice to run. Um, even though I could barely work, I still had so many people to provide for financially. Um, I couldn't stop working. So I couldn't take three weeks off to go and, and, and get better from this. So I did it while I was at work. I went what we call in English cold turkey and I just stopped using them and um, dealt with the symptoms which were horrific. 
this was now in from January 2015 um, through to May 2015 is when I used the morphine. And there were two other very strong opiates I was on as well and, and a neurological suppressor. So my pain came down from about 14 out of 10, which is excruciating and intolerable to about six or seven out of 10 with breakthrough pain. And breakthrough pain just means it goes back to 14 out of 10 if you exert yourself and then you can't do anything until that settles. Right, when I found my integrative functional medical specialist that I got referred to by a patient, this was what I arrived to find my partner and I, that this was the steps. And I thought, you know, if you're going to treat people who have a lot of pain and weakness, should you really have the stairway to heaven at the front of your, uh, your practice? But now when I walk it, I just laugh. I love it. I love it. I love that I've got past this. Everything we did with him was based on bloods. And so I felt very secure in all of it that we were assessing my bloods every time I saw him and changing the medicines. This was just two of the prescriptions. This was actually June, 2020, but I started seeing him in February, 2015. And we started this journey to try and get me out of a wheelchair. And it took about four years, three years to get me to a point where I could walk with, um, without a wheelchair, but not for long, not more than 100 meters, as you'll see later. But what we managed was the pain and the energy. And these are two very different scripts. The so one is for neurological suppressors on the right, pain management, um, anti-inflammatories, all of that kind of thing. And then there was stuff to settle my, my gastrointestinal tract started burning from all the strong opiates. So I had to go on things to manage that as well. And on the, the middle, the, that script is all about stabilizing the hormonal body. Um, I was on for very much of the time, progesterone, testosterone, testosterone and estrogen, um, because that hormonal body was destroyed. And I was on very powerful doses initially of um, tetroxin, euthyrox, and T, T3 and T4 for the thyroid, because you need... And both of them to function for your thyroid stimulating hormone to work properly. And my thyroid was near destroyed. So this was my regime. And you can imagine, I left out the pictures of how much work it would take to get these into containers for just two weeks at a time so that I didn't have to take them out of each container each morning. If you look in the middle picture, um, and this was my best, most stable. This is from December, 2019. Um, in the morning, I, I took, I think it was at my worst, 24 different capsules and pills. And if you look from the left to the right, the, the first one, two, three, four, those, that's pure pain, opiates, anti-inflammatories. The next one, the pink one's a neurological suppressor. Then we have the thyroid meds, then, um, my blood pressure went up because of the hormonal body being so damaged and the pain. For, so I had to go on blood pressure medication. The next one is to settle the gut. Then it was probiotics because my gut was near destroyed. And then it starts with the energy meds. All the next one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All the next seven are um, energy meds and vitamin E and then magnesium and then um, glyconutrients and something for my something else to try and stabilize the gut. If you look at those powders, there's five powders in the corner there. And I would take all of this every single day just to function, just to be able to have a day where I could work with between six and seven out of 10 pain and try and manage my energy. And I have a mattress at work and stabilizing um, mats on the floor, which reduce the pressure of the floor on your feet so that I could stand for a little bit longer. Um, because as a practitioner, I need to stand sometimes, so I can't only sit. So I put all of that in place just to be able to function. And this was at my most stable. This is what I was on. Just December 2019. It's hard to believe. So he used to try everything. He put me on drips twice a month um, at about $180 each drip. And I would go there and he would pump all these supplements and vitamins and everything into me, trying to raise my mitochondrial energy, trying to raise my NAD in the body, 
um, trying to get my body to function again. But after six months of doing, or was it longer? It was 10 months of doing these drips. It was quite clear they were doing nothing. For an hour after each drip, I'd feel really, really good. And it was meant to change from an hour to three hours to five hours to eventually you fine with them. It never got past an hour and it was just too expensive to justify. So I started gaining weight. I couldn't exercise, obviously, and I couldn't use my legs properly. So I couldn't drive my manual car, my gear shift car. So I had to buy a car um, and this is me collecting it, which are a uh, Tiptronic automatic because you can drive it with your hands. And you have to break um, properly with your, your, your legs. So I always stayed out of traffic. So I barely had to break. I drove very slowly and I managed to drive with my hands. So I wouldn't have any sudden stops required. And I would have to sleep at the end of my workday before I would drive home. It's a 20 minute drive, so it's not too long. But I would sleep at the end of my workday on my mattress at work and then sometimes for two hours and then get up in the evening and drive home and then get straight back onto my bed and someone would bring me food. And then the next morning I would start it all again. And that's how I existed because um, I got this car in November 2014. So that's how I existed from 2014 until 2020, as you'll soon see. Anywhere I went, I was in a wheelchair, anywhere. I couldn't walk more than 100 meters without triggering a neurological flare-up, which would cause exceptional pain and put me in bed in hospital um, and then taken home after being treated for pain with growing pain meds. So when, um, whenever I did anything, this you know impacted the people in my life so much because I became the person who you had to make a plan to take with. It wasn't always just, well, let's go here. There was no, let's just go here anymore. And we were very active. The person on the left is my son. He was 14 at the time this was taken. And this is when he, you know, lost his mother for a while because um, I look like I'm happy and smiling, but there's, there was very little activity. Um, this I was going to do another speaking tour and that was a big mistake. And so I stopped them after that. That was uh, November 20. 15 they asked me to come do another one and it was too much it took me three and a half weeks to recover and um, I can't do that and I had exceptional fallout from the pain so everything I did was to manage my energy and reduce my pain everything I did so I barely did anything because anything I did do created terrible overflows of neurological flares which caused the 14 out of 10 pain and a fatigue that feels like you've run a marathon with someone else on your back and going to the bathroom just feels like it's too much. So that's what I did. I let, my life became very small, it became showing up in my practice to earn money to take care of people and try and have the money I needed to try different treatments and getting back into bed as soon as I could so I could be okay to do it again the next day for a few hours. And I was also on partial disability from my insurance because I couldn't obviously work properly. When I had a neurological flare, the condition that they name it is called PENE -E in English. It's post-exertional neuroencephalopathy. And it basically means if you have any effort expenditure, you risk flaring the whole neurological system. And when you do that, you have to deal with the fallout and the fallout is exhaustion. And, but immeasurable exhaustion and terrible pain. So I landed up in hospital again and again. My friends would take me to, to hospital because I couldn't get there myself. And um, it would be hours and hours and hours of pain treatments right up to morphine. And eventually they had to put me on solumedrol drips for 16 hours just to break the pain cycle. And then it would take a whole day to recover. And then I needed to get back to work. So in the end, my insurance said, we're not paying anymore for you to keep going back to the hospital. And my um, integrative functional medicine doctor and I figured out we could uh, do a migraine cocktail, which is what that script says, literally migraine cocktail. Um, and I would take these, in the end, there were seven drugs that worked the best, but they chose six. I would take them at once 
when the flare started and then get into bed because I couldn't walk within 20 to minutes to half an hour of taking all of that. And it would take 16 to 24 hours for me to recover enough to be able to function again and, and try and go back to work. And I had one of those a week. So I had four a month and that was the best we ever got to by 2018. And it never got better. That was my world. It just didn't improve from there. No matter what we tried, we tried cannabis oil. We tried cannabis itself. We, he just kept saying, let's try this, let's try this. And eventually said, I don't have anything else to try. I don't know what else to do. Things were stable, but certainly not high functioning at all. Because I was on such high doses of cortisone for two years, it damaged my pancreas, which um, started to change my blood sugar usage and I became pre-diabetic and it pushed my blood pressure up. And so I started to have the blood pressure problem and it was exacerbated by the fact that I was on such uh, living with such high pain. I gained a fortune of weight. I barely recognized myself and dragged myself through every day. And eventually, he, because of all these changes, he had to take me off the cortisone. And so the pain became worse, but my blood sugar management came right at, because I heard what he said and I fought and I lost all the weight. It was very hard and it took a year and a half and I couldn't exercise at all or even walk upstairs. So um, it was just pure calorie deficiency, very strictly controlled with the nutritional physiologist and I lost all of it. And so some of those benefits, you know, came to me, but not wellness. So that just confirms it. That's where I got to as stable as I could. I mean, that was good. <laughs> I mean, not by anyone else's standards, but for me, it was really good where we got to. In January 2020, I went to see a craniosacral therapist and she said to me, I'd known her for a very long time, we were very close, and she said to me, I don't think you came to me for craniosacral therapy. I think it's because I meant to tell you about these patches that are being imported into South Africa by somebody we both knew very well. I'd, I had known him since he was 17 and he's an ex academic scientist, a physiotherapist, and he researches everything. And I just, um, I trusted him implicitly because he had actually helped my son was sick when he was a teenager and he needed glyconutrients, but we didn't know that and neither did any of the doctors and he put him on them and he came by. And so I knew whatever he was gonna bring to me that he had researched it, he knew the background, if he thought it could work because he knew it was going on with me, then it could probably work. So I phoned him and I said to him, I believe you have some patches here or something. And I've tried patches before, so I'm a little bit skeptical. And he said, what patches did you try? I said, I was on buprenorphine patches with morphine in them and I got very ill from them. He said, well, then you're gonna be happier because these have no medicine in them. So I said, well, how's a patch with no medicine gonna help me get better? So he said, because your body knows what to do. And it's about the only thing that can get you right is your own body. And all these patches will do is remind your body of what to do. I said to him, well, how? And he explained to me um, a little bit. And I said to him, you know what? Do you think this can work? He said, Bev, I don't think anything else can work but your own stem cells and your own body bringing down its inflammation. Nothing else is even believed to help with neurological damage. And your body is so messed up hormonally. It's so inflamed. The only thing that could possibly get you right is your own body if it's working properly. And these will help it get to a place where it works properly again. If they work for you, this is exactly what you need. So I said, well, I trust you. So tell me what to do. I'm not researching it. He said, I'll send you science. I said, I don't, I don't have the energy or the brain power. At that time, I didn't. So just send me. Tell me what to do. I said, is it in a... Um, network market he said yes I said fantastic they always have great products and, and great research I said fantastic how do I register what do you want me to do put me on these patches when my son first saw them he said to me and now we're trying patches I said yep stickers let's try them I said to him I would try them for six weeks but um, the guy who was importing them said if you don't try them for six months 
rather leave it. If you're not willing to give your body a chance to do its work, then don't shortchange it, just leave it. And I said, no, that's okay. I'll do it for six months. I've just given everything six weeks and it either started to show promise or it didn't. He said, do it for six months. I said, fine, you got it. So I um, went on to them. I went on to the Y age set, except for carnosine for some bizarre reason. He put me on glutathione and Eon and he put me on X39. And the YH set and the X39 were the only four patches available in South Africa in January 2020. That was all that was here. So he essentially put me on everything we had in South Africa. And then I noticed on the first day that my energy felt a little bit better. My pain felt a little bit less. I might even have slept at night because I was on very powerful sleeping meds because the pain got so unbearable. I'd wake up crying in the middle of the night from the pain and not even realizing I was crying. So I had to be really sedated. So therefore also getting up was hard. And I noticed that getting up was, you know, a little bit easier. And I thought, I'm sure I'm imagining it. It's psychosomatic, it's in my head. There's stickers. Within four days, however, I thought, no, I don't know this energy. I haven't had energy like this for seven years. Like this is a bit more energy. I mean, maybe for you, it would be exhaustion. For me, it was 20% more energy than I've had in seven years. Because I used to get up and go shower and get dressed and uh, do my hair and have to lie down for 45 minutes because that was so exhausting for me. Whereas most of us get up, get showered, get dressed, put on our face and our hair and walk out the door. I couldn't do that. Within a month, I noticed, wait, let me go back. Because after a week, he said to me, you know, I haven't put you on all the patches. And you're complaining like that. You still feel very fogged in your head. And I said, yeah, I thought this would help with that. And he said, it would, but I didn't put you on carnosine. Let me add that in. And I said, why didn't you? He said, I'm not sure. Let's just add it in. And I said, fine. So I was with the, the out carnosine for the first week. Within five minutes of the carnosine patch going on, I felt dizzy. I felt a bit blindheaded. And I said to him, is this normal? He said, very. He said, just breathe, drink your water. Let's get through it. Within 20 minutes, I had to go back to my practice. And I started feeling my brain switch on and concentrate and think of papers that I'd read on different aspects of my specialized field from years ago and advanced conferences I'd attended years ago. And I thought, is this possible from a patch? I mean, is this possible? Within two months, my brain was working so fast that I, I decided to enroll because we were now in lockdown. It was March 2020 and we were in lockdown and I wasn't allowed to work for six weeks. So I decided to enroll in an international dip, um, diploma in executive coaching and I completed that and another advanced course in my uh, profession with the international um, conference, which I've completed. And I started studying Spanish just because my brain was bored. And I couldn't believe that I had my brain back again because I couldn't think of anything after work. Everything was about recuperating for the next day. I went from having four religious full body migraines every month for years and years to having three in February two in March, two in April, one in May, and it's the last one I've ever had. I haven't known that pain at all. I have no breakthrough pain. It hasn't happened since May 2020. I couldn't um, run yet. Um, I couldn't, I tried during lockdown. I thought maybe I can run. So I jogged on the treadmill for two minutes, triggered a full body neural migraine and had two days in bed. So I thought, okay, it's only been four months, three months at spare. And uh, the first time I could actually uh, run came later, but my son noticed how things were changing and he was 
getting so curious, very skeptical, but so curious. It's like, do you think these things are really doing this? I said, well, it's not my mind. I have tried so hard to get better. So it's got to be these, these things. I still hadn't researched them. After four months of doing this trial, I phoned the guy and I said, I want to cancel the trial. And, and he said, why? You haven't given it enough time. I said, no, I want to stay on it. I'll stay on this for life because if I only ever get as much improved energy as I have today and as much reduced pain as I have right now, and I was still having breakthrough migraines, as far as I knew, this is so immeasurably better than anything I've experienced up till now. I'm not taking these off. And when I saw my doctor, because I see him twice a year and have full bloods taken, um, I walked in there and he said, what have you been doing? You look amazing. Your bloods are incredible. Come talk to me. And I told him about them. He looked at the science and he's researched it. And, and him and his wife are both on it. He has an anti-aging center. And so um, he uses them. So it's a remarkable thing that has happened in my life. And after nine months of being on them, I noticed um, that my hand was changing because it triggered a very aggressive arthritis. And I have, a, you know, this finger, the nodule is, you can see it. Um, it's reducing. I mean, it keeps getting smaller and smaller. And I noticed that it was reducing and I've been mapping that with pictures and it's fascinating to me because I couldn't close my hands and open them and I couldn't touch this finger, I couldn't touch it. And I mean, bless you, uh, you know, there's no pain. And I can close my hands, I can do whatever I like with them. I couldn't do push-ups. I couldn't do anything, but I can do all of that now. And it just kept getting better and better. And the January, the next year I started, um, trying to jog and I could jog um, without pain and it didn't trigger anything. And I cried my eyes out and um, I was very emotional and I'd videoed myself doing it and sent it to family and friends that I'm close to around the world. And there was just such a reckoning of what's possible in the human body when it's correctly supported. So when the doctors told me, you will never run again, I decided, I will run again. You don't know how, but I will run again. And so that absolutely became my, my mantra and my hashtag. And I was determined, determined to get to a point where I will feel alive again and find the solution for this because I just knew that because medical science didn't have a solution, it didn't mean there wasn't a solution. It just meant medical science didn't have it. And for somebody who comes from a medical background to say that, it might be a bit startling, but we have to open our minds if we really want to get to wellness and the, the medical world strictly isn't providing it. So I started thriving in my practice. I started exercising and meditating and getting fit again. I started to embrace the changes. My whole face changed shape. I mean, I was very tired that night and I'd worked out already. So, um, you know, this was me stable on the left. June 2018, that was me phenomenally stable and doing so well and big, you know, overweight, in pain, etc. stable. And um, there on the right, I'm exhausted on many things, but totally different version of myself already in September 2020. And um, it just continued to improve. So this is a gyrotonic machine. And it's weightless. I have one in my garden. That's me on the right in March this year. And that was me in September 2020 trying it out. So that didn't last very long because I tried it out in September, in August. Um, and I had a full body neural flare. So I thought, oh, oh, well, too soon, too soon. And then in September, I tried it again. And that worked really well. And I had like such a good time with that. Um, and it didn't work out that I could continue with that, but I went back to Pilates, which I hadn't been able to do for years. Um, and it just kept improving. Everything kept improving. Should I show the video, Susanna? Yes, have you can to show the video. Share. Yeah, you stop All right, share so and then share the video. what the screen video. looks like yes. uh, for a second. Um, and I'll just... Uh, Give you a glimpse maybe, maybe, of what that um, looks like maybe in Beth, the real world. Beth, I help you Should to share. Should I do it at the end, rather? I help you to share because I find that your web uh, is it um, not too stable. Maybe your internet. That's why we have uh, some grey box come out. 
Ah, okay. Yeah. So I'll let me, leave it. Let me, let, me, let me try to share my screen. Let's see. Let's see. Is it better? Wait a moment. Okay, okay. So let me see here. Okay. Um, the desktop. Let me share my desktop. Okay. I cannot do this. Oh. Mm. Uh, I can't do that because uh, I'm, I'm. Okay, so let's yeah, carry on. You, you try, no, you try, it, you try to was... share. You try to I'm just trying to share. You try to share because I my screen is now is in full screen. I'm I'm recording. That's why they they not allow me to close and open. So you you try to open and you try to open. Okay, I'm going to go back to the presentation then. I think it's just safer, especially if everyone's seen gray boxes and things. It's right. all right. It moves you. I think you can get the idea. It moves in a in a circular pattern was designed by NASA to help them learn how to work in space and it's remarkable and I now have the privilege of having one and um, it's just an incredible machine to work on because it tones the entire body so powerfully and so fast I'm going to take us past this there we go so the dream came true um, of me being able to run again from April this year it took a while. Um, I was walking for quite a long time and I tried to run and it wasn't that it triggered pain. It was that I couldn't get my legs to run. Neurologically, they weren't wired properly again so that they would let me run. And this is one of my dearest friends who I included there who said to me, you will run again and I will run with you. And she does every opportunity. And uh, it's just been such an incredible journey. Um, every time you beat your time at the park run, um, you, you ring a bell. So that was a video of me ringing a bell because every time I've done it, I can't run the full five kilometers yet, but I keep improving. And um, every time I beat my time, you, you know, you go ring the bell at the end. It's very cute. On the right, that's aerial yoga. Also, there's different versions, silks and that kind of thing. And I've been trying new things and stretching my body, but nothing triggers pain. So I don't land up getting into any kind of position where I've overdone it or there's a problem or anything like that. Uh, nothing like that happens. And then we started to travel. In July, 2021, we went to Zanzibar out of nowhere to escape the lockdown. And I didn't, um, my son said to me, did you book a wheelchair? And I said, no, I'm not booking it. I'm sure I can do without it. And we did. That was the first time in um, eight years that I was able to go longer than a hundred meters without thinking about it in an airport with no wheelchairs. And it was such a phenomenal experience. And then we went to um, New York and Barcelona and that was stunning. And I don't know if you can even see the pictures. I hope you can. But on the right, um, you can see the picture of me walking in the, the, the square in Barcelona. It was really just like, I just can walk anywhere I like for as much as I like. And there's just such a freedom in my body again, which is such a privilege. And the I pimped up my uh, Nike Air Force um, One shoes. And I don't know if you can see on the plate, it says hashtag IWRA, I will run again. So pretty much the mantra. And of course, the privilege of meetings as Anna and Joe and APAC um, was one of the most incredible experiences. I can't encourage that enough. Whatever it takes, be there. What an amazing privilege. And I took my son with me and we just had such a phenomenal time. Such an incredible company and their integrity and ethic and their humility with the, with the way they approach pursuing wellness and anti-aging and helping people is just so phenomenal. I only researched the products after being on them for nine months and seeing even my autoimmune condition reverse. I only researched the products then because I thought I need to put patience on these and then I have to understand the science and I have to understand the studies and that's when I researched them and I've helped so many of my patients with that. So 
that in a nutshell is where I'm up to. The healing does continue. I'm noticing new things all the time. And such an absolute privilege to, to be part of this organization now and to be able to reach out to other people and help them because there is so much more than medical science allows. And this has changed everything for me absolutely everything i couldn't feel more grateful and more privileged and thank you for the opportunity to share with all of you i really value that so much thank you so much oh so that was my version of my story and i've made a mistake here my, my bad i'm not sure you're even seeing this but i've used this with my family as well so this was my father's brain in March the 8th, 2021. He had a massive subdural hematoma. You can see it over here. And the first one covered in patches that I sneaked into ICU and took off my own body and stuck on his because I wasn't allowed to go in there with anything. In the middle of COVID, I only got into ICU because I'm medical. So they left me in. Um, he walked afterwards. He talked. He had full memory. And the neurologist said, this is impossible. It's impossible. It, nothing made sense to her and then she saw the patches and said are you putting these little things on him is this what's causing him to have a recovery she uses them on her patients now and then he had another one which unfortunately left him stroked and with a massive heart attack and paralyzed on the left side of his body and in a coma for 70 days so i just kept putting on the patches fighting the doctors you can, he's, it was covered in patches perpetually, and they said he will never come through it. We, he's going to be brain damaged. His brain was showing very, very, very low scores on the EEG, and they said, you, you know, then he, he's not going to survive. Then he developed a bed sore because they didn't take care of him properly, and he got septicemia. And I said to the doctor, put him on a glutathione drip and leave the stickers on him he's going to be fine and they he said no this is when he dies and i said well we're god you're not so let's move forward and he eventually woke up from his coma and he came off the tracheotomy um in his throat he learned to speak again he's um learned to swallow again he had a feeding tube they said he'd never eat again he eats i was with him this morning he fed himself and ate his toasted uh, cheese and tomato. He loves it. And a coffee freezer. It's his happy place. And he's learning to walk again. And it is just the most remarkable thing um, to see that he is slowly regaining the left side of his body. And the physiotherapist who works with him is so blown away. He's using them on his patients now. So just by helping people and people recovering, we help others. And it's such a privilege. Um, this is the pressure sore he got, which the physician said was going to kill him and he'll never survive it. Well, it took eight months with X39 and the YH set and it was gone completely healed. Two surgeries, one uh, to debride it, um, one septicemia that almost killed him, they said. Well, I don't think so. And there he is. He doesn't even have it today. My cat had renal failure. The dog on my left, he's just aging. He's an older Dachshund, but he just had a checkup. And the veterinary surgeon said to me, he is in such exceptional condition. What is in the sticker? So they're looking at the science now. And the cat, my catty boy, he almost died. He was allergic to the pollen that comes out of lilies. And the sweet child almost died. And I put on what you would put on for someone with renal uh, impairment you would want to help the energy in their body so energy enhancer you'd want the organ functioning and bioelectric properties to raise up as quickly as possible so carnosine and of course the stem cells have to do repairs so x39 so that's x39 and carnosine on his head and he had energy enhancer you can see on his hips over there um, over his adrenal glands and kidneys and I was devastated after he was diagnosed and he was just sitting with his, he was comforting me. But within um, two weeks, this very sick, weak child was running across the garden and playing. And he's such a magnificent boy. And every now and then I, I take them off um, um, and I let him have some time without them and see how he does. But he gets, uh, he gets sick again. And then he'll literally come to me and I, I call him and say, come for a patch boy and he'll come and I, he'll just sit there and I'll put them on. 
And the first day I put them on, he tried to take it off, the energy enhancer that he could get you, try to take it off. And I said to him, I don't know if you understand me, but you need to leave these on. We're trying to save your life. And he's never touched them again. And he must feel something because this cat is thriving. They gave me four months to a year with him. And we're now almost at the end of the second year. And he'll live very, very long. Nothing wrong with him. And I think now I hand back to you, Susanna. So very much. Thank you, Bert. I think a lot of people, they will have a question and you will have an incredible share because um, this is so amazing. Someone is uh, too good to be trust, you know, and uh, but if you keep patching, I get that. You, you trust the product. So you the amazing will come a day. So and also someone will challenge a specially a lot of specialists. They don't trust the sticker. This is no use because they're using the medicine. They're using the drugs. So somehow, you know, our our customer, they will they will query. Is this really this sticker can do? And even though the doctor, so even though I show them the how to remove the pain in a minute, they still think that this kiwi just a moment so you you are actually you're also in medicine field how you how you share with your customer you using a sticker can heal the body i i think i think you also get no, a lot of challenge <laughs> Yeah, I do. I have a lot of challenges and a lot of uh, people who don't want to use them. And I, and I just say to them, if I gave this to you in a pill, would you swallow it? And they go, yeah, I could probably swallow a pill. So, okay, so if I gave you a pill that would definitely turn on your stem cells, you'd swallow it. Then, yeah. I'm like, okay. What if your body knows how to make its own stem cells and it just needs a switch? What if that's it? What if your body knows how to make its own glutathione and it just needs a reminder? What if your body can raise the energy in itself, but it's forgotten to do it? And the patch reflects your own body energy back at you. And it says, oh, at this speed, turn on this. At that speed, turn on that. And I always relate it back to the UV light. I always say to patients, have you ever got a suntan or a sunburn? Yes. Okay, do you ever feel happier when you go in the sun? Yeah, okay, well, that's because your serotonin goes up and it doesn't go up in your skin, it goes up in your brain. So you can go sit outside with a hat on and your whole body covered except your hands and you'll still feel happier. Why? Because the sun hits your hand and it travels in the skin to your brain and the brain goes, oh, at this wavelength speed, I need to raise serotonin, raise D3 in men who expose this area of their body, um, their neck to the sun over 45, they naturally raise testosterone. I need to change the melanocytes and tan. You accept that? Yes. Okay. So why can't you accept that infrared light at different speeds does different things for the body? Well, because I've never thought of it. Of course, you've never thought of it because it's new technology. I'm educating you. It's not rocket science. I didn't believe it either. I just tried the stickers and they worked. So there's two ways to do it. You can try and master the science and make peace with it. I doubt you do that before you take antibiotics your doctor puts you on, but okay, go ahead. Or you can say, what do I actually have to lose? What do I have to lose? Some people say, well, I don't believe in it. I say to them, do you believe in paracetamol? Do you believe in chemotherapy? Do you believe in antibiotics? Yes. Do you have to believe yes. in them to use them? They don't need your belief. They work just fine without your help. So, I mean, I might have a slightly more um, or less tolerant approach to it, but I'm very clear that these patches don't need your belief and they don't need your wisdom and they don't have any need for you to understand the science. They're going to work anyway. I was with my 92 year old aunt, my mother's older sister um, in Israel recently in July. And she has terrible rheumatoid arthritis. And I'm happy to share these videos with you so you can share with your groups there. Because clearly I can't share a thing from here and I'm so sorry if it's been disappointing for everyone. But she has terrible swollen rheumatoid arthritis and she couldn't do this. 
And I said to her, can I try help you? And she said to me, I don't believe in those. And I gave her my same speech. Do you believe in chemotherapy? She said, what do you mean? I said, exactly. Stop your nonsense. Do you want the patch or not? She said, all right, put it on. And within a few minutes, she said, my hand's tingling. It was X39, by the way. So she said, my hand's tingling. I said, okay. I said, let's just see. Within a few hours, all the rheumatoid swelling was gone wow. for her. And her hands were moving. And I have a video of her going, if this just does this for me, that would be enough. And I said to her, do you believe in them now? She said, yes. I said, still didn't need your belief. So I, the way I deal with it is really talking about um, how nature works in the world and how this genius, David Schmidt, has been afforded the privilege of harnessing nature to help us. And mm -hmm. just to remind our bodies, we know what to do. We know how to make glutathione. We know how to make pain go away we know you know we yes. just don't do it without the switches being turned on and the other way i explain to people is i say when you come home at night if you don't have an apple house or a google house you have to flick a switch to turn your your lights on don't you yes i'm like okay and what was there without the the switch flicked darkness okay so the, there was an absence of light without the switch flicked on Agree, yes. And then you press the switch and now you have light. Yes, okay. So it didn't mean the light wasn't there. It just means it wasn't triggered. Okay, fine. I said, okay. So the glutathione production is there. It's just not triggered. All the patch does is switch it on. It's just a light switch. Yes. That's all it is. And it's literally a light switch. So that's how I do it. I don't drown people in science. And I just say to them, if you want the science, we have it. We have presentations I've yeah. made pulling the science together. We have explanations. We have hundreds of hours of information yeah. on the LifeWave channel. Go crazy, but don't yeah. waste your life in the process. Wear the patches. Yes, and you know, someone will ask you, oh, do you have any proof? Do you have any information? I say, I have. I can share with you, but you need to spend half years to study them. <laughs> Because exactly. Too many. Exactly. Too many. Do you want to get a PhD in life wave or do yes. you want to just put the patch yes. on? Yes, you want See to for yourself. PhD. That is so yes, funny. The PhD. And that's the one thing that there isn't in life wave. There's SPD, that's you, but there's no PhD. We need the PhDs to the people who need them, and we just aim for SPD. That's more yes. than good enough. Yes. Yeah, more than when good enough. When I grow up, just... I want to be like you. You, you definitely can do, you know, you open up the South Africa market. You're so amazing. On that time I met you, wow, you share with me a lot of your stories, very touching, especially your dad. You not, you are yeah, de determined amazing. to, you fight with the doctor. I just remember yeah, you said to me, you doctors. fight with the doctor because the doctor of your dad say that she will, she will go, he will go. And then you say you, you, you are not the one to decide. So God will arrange. That's so right. you patch your dad yeah. and then determine to do the just on light wave and we, he wake up. And today you can yeah. take care of him and then he can eat by himself and he can walk around. So amazing. He can't walk around yet. He can't walk yes. around yet. He's very much in a, he's not walking yet, but he's uh, in physiotherapy, able to walk mm -hmm. some steps. He's going to get there. I have no doubt. But this is, no this doubt. He can, but he in, can, time, in, yes, time, in time, in time, because the body time. takes time yes. and we need patience. I'm still healing. I've just yes. seen my doctor again. I've come off even more of my thyroid medication. And he said, you know, your thyroid is busy healing. And you're 50 years old. I said, I'm 50 years young. Thank you very much. He said, <laughs> but at 50, people don't heal a thyroid. It doesn't get better. It gets worse. Yes. Every time I do bloods, I raise the medicine. Every time I do bloods for you, I lower the medicine. I can't believe you're still healing. I said to him, of course, I'm still healing because I'm not back where I started. I'm better in many ways, but I want the healing to continue. I don't think I'm done yet. So many people do ask, how long do I have to use them for? Yes. I, I ask a simple question. How long do you want to experience your own wellness for? Go without them. That's true. If you feel better. That's true. Yes. I say to everyone I put them on, use them for a minimum of three months. Minimum. Minimum. Properly, three, the way they're, in, six the months, way they're yes. described. And then stop. 
and see what you notice and see which life you prefer. Decide for yourself, be your own medical experiment. You're clever enough to know if you feel better or not. <laughs> Do it properly, then stop. And within about four days, they will be back to where they are unhealed because I can't get to day four. Every now and then I have a little bit of a, a gap just now I'm a bit brave and I take off this one, take off that one, play with this. And you know how my body feels the best? Everything on. That's how it feels the best. I wear the YH set. I have my X39 and X49 on and X49 has been a game changer addition. Um, we only had four in South Africa up until April this year, actually, we now have nine. So um, we're only missing a few. And I was importing them from, from uh, the United Kingdom. I imported Energy Enhancer, I imported um, SP6, I brought in Ice Wave. I was bringing things in because I wanted more of them, but we couldn't get them in South Africa. And that's how I had it available to save my cat because I wouldn't have had the Energy Enhancer here otherwise. So now that uh, the LifeWave uh, Corporation has seen our potential and seen what we're doing in South Africa, that we really are um, working to grow the, the usage here, they've said, okay, we'll give you more. And they've given us now, we have nine, which is amazing, amazing. But if, if there's any other questions? Anything? Yes, I, I think, I, I, think uh, I, I allow them to open up your mic because uh, I think uh, maybe we continue. Someone maybe have uh, some question want to ask Dal. So take the chance because she, we have a eight hours distance, time distance. And then if you wanted to ask, so please open your mic or your hands up so I can call your name. I think, I think Beth is almost need to go back to work. Okay, so let me see if any questions. I have a yet. patient coming shortly. Yeah, so yes, um, they appreciate all, good. all of us. They appreciate, and then, um, and then, any more question want to ask Bell? Susan, and there's a question there from James Long in the chat. Okay. No, James, it's just a PC and then... Oh, there, and then how, how long do you want to experience wellness for? This is for the customer, yeah. Yep, that's this my line. This is a very good share. <laughs> yeah. How long do you want to experience wellness for? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, if we don't have any more questions, I will just let Beth go first because she, she have a customer's coming, a patient is coming. You. Right? Thank you so much, Beth. Hope Thank we can so have much. a chance to share again your amazing story because you have many, many testimony around you. Thank you, I look forward. Yes, yeah, thank you so much. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks for your... Thank you, well, see you. Well, try to fix up the transmission next time. God bless you. Yes, thank cheers, you. Cheers, cheers. God bless. Bev.